Thank you much, so much for being here. Uh, we recognize the obvious here. Um, Congress's popularity is at an all-time low, uh, about 12 percent, somewhere 12 to 20 percent. We recognize in the most recent Pew studies uh, asked whether or not they think that their elected officials will do the right thing. 78-ish percent of the American public uh, don't think they'll do the right thing. Um, and I recognize I come from the state of Illinois. Um, and uh, I want you to know I hear the jokes, right? What did uh, one Illinois prisoner say to the other Illinois prisoner? Uh, the food was better here when you were governor. <laughs> so uh, sometimes you have to laugh to get through uh, the morass, but you have to recognize that um, this is all happening at the exact time that we have to make these critical decisions. Right? Decisions that, in some cases, pit one group against another. We, we hear about it every day. And I've watched politics for a long time and recognized that um, we've always had to do that. The difference now is we don't have the public's trust. If you have the public's trust, it's a different story. The bottom line is it's, it's very hard to lead when you don't have that respect in people's trust. So what can you do? And it's really uh, what the Sunlight Foundation, uh, I want to thank you and Dan for coordinating all this, the Advisory Committee on Transparency or ACT, uh, and their briefings are outstanding. Uh, you know, you've got to show an understanding with the public that um, sunlight is the best disinfectant and that uh, we're going to lead by example in our own actions and uh, as a whole in Congress. So that's the bottom line of why we're here and why we're trying to move forward. Um, these are all extraordinarily important times. Uh, secrecy breeds distrust. Uh, the conspiracy theorists don't need any goading, uh, so we don't need to give them any more ammunition. So we can't trust, we can't act without their trust. There's a number of opportunities out there, my staff and working with the Sunlight Foundation and other organizations. And, Chairman Issa's staff, uh, there are good opportunities out there. The Omnibus Transparency Bill 2340 it includes a wide range of open government proposals from expanding public access to information about members of Congress to making CRS reports public to increasing transparency in contracting. Uh, it's a marker. It's important. The Lobbyist Oversight Bill, again, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong at all about what lobbyists do. We'd be lost without them. They're extraordinary advocates and sources of information, but the public needs to know what we're doing and who's attempting to influence us. The Greater Transparency and Federal Property Act, uh, working with Chairman Issa to coordinate a hearing on this. Uh, Budget Transparency Act, 1302. Um, uh, again, where transparency and good government merge. The fact of the matter is, we're flying blind. Uh, we don't know how bad things are. If we're actually using appropriate accounting methods, unfortunately our debt and deficit issues are far worse. And the public has a right to know. Um, we also have, a, I think, a bill that has an excellent chance of passing, uh, a bill to make congressional reports available to the public. Another thing I've learned, I guess, is that there's, there is a lot of good reports. They're very helpful and productive. A lot of times, they're submitted to a committee and they gather dust in the subcommittee room. Uh, the fact of the matter is they should all be available online to anyone who wants access to them. That's uh, a fingertip away, and it's very possible a bill like that can pass. So uh, we, we also are attempting to get the super committee to be more transparent. There's probably never been a time in Congress when one committee has had so much influence and power. Um, so Mr. Lobsack, who I think will be here a little later, We've written a letter to the House and Senate leadership calling for, for full transparency of the Super Committee, but there's also a legislation uh, with Representative Renacci and Loebsack to do just that. So uh, um, we'd like to think, make some progress here. There's some low-hanging fruit. I think the Access to Cre Congressionally Mandated Reports Act is there. Lobbyist oversight is there. Um, the American Bar Association recently came out with their list of recommendations similar to ours. Uh, I think those are helpful. Um, I think FOIA reform should be an obvious, quick uh, thrust f um, 
uh, like, again, I'd like to work with Chairman Issa and his staff to tour that in. Um, so we've got a few minutes, and I know this is a little haphazard, but let me take any questions you might have, and then we'll have to be flexible or let give people an opportunity to speak if they'd like to. Sure, and if I can't answer them, I'll let him answer. Any questions in the meantime? What's the status of the government wide identifiers? I know it's been testimony before your committee arguing that we need to be able to search, for example, for organizations across various databases, like FEC database, obvious disclosure database, GIFS database, so you can easily track it. Um, and is it. Are you moving ahead with that or, or not that initiative? Um, to do anything? to standardize identifiers. We do it in other parts of government, you know, mm -hmm. Department of Homeland Security, Department mm -hmm. of Defense, that to track terrorism. Sure what what you mean like unique identifiers for everybody that we do business with? That's right, yeah. I think it's a great idea, and we've done a number of different, um, you know, contractor oversight bills. I think it's easier said than done. Um, and we'd love to, to talk to you about it, you know, afterwards and, and sure. work on that, because I think it's certainly right. something that, that needs addressing. I wasn't sure if there was another bill that I was missing on that. Thank you. Yes, sir. Could you um, tell us a little more about the letter on the super committee, who signed it, when it went, and what I know Mr. Lobzak and I were the chief signers. Uh, Robin can tell you who else signed on to it. Um, we don't have a response back yet, do we? So, um, it has gotten a lot of attention. I think it, if anything, it has set a marker out there and let the super committee know the interest is there. I think it's raised the profile as we move forward. Uh, next week, we're going to try to follow up with the super committee and try to get a response and, again, push for the legislation that's out there to try to do the same, same thing as well. Again, I want to thank my staff, Chairman Issa's staff, and uh, uh, the Sunlight Foundation for all your efforts. This is an extraordinary time. Um, uh, I, I can't stress it enough. I, I come from a state where this is, um, you know, the U.S. Attorney makes a big point of corruption, and uh, there's a, a trial going on. Well, there's always a trial going on, and there's a cost to corruption. I get that, and there's, there's even been attempts to put dollar figures on it. But it doesn't have to go that far for there to be a cost to corruption. The loss of public trust the m most important aspect is it makes it difficult to lead. It makes it difficult to make those tough choices that Chairman and I have to do. So uh, I, I want folks to recognize that we hear that and the Transparency Caucus members are committed to moving forward to uh, making our government more transparent and therefore more responsible and accountable. I think that the fringe benefit is it, it leads to better leadership and decision making. Uh, Chairman Issa. I want to echo what Mr. Quigley said. We, on a bipartisan basis, are dedicated to get modernization of whistleblower passed, IG additional powers uh, and enablement in a sensible way to pass. And we're going to author uh, an IG reform bill that includes not leaving IGs vacant ever again. Uh, and I, I say that because transparency is not just the Data Act and getting you direct access to and for that matter, government in general, better access, but it's also making sure that the people within the system that primarily receive that information from whistleblowers, that primarily every day we hold accountable to do the research, the studies, and ultimately IG reports are something both you, all of you in the audience and we depend on in order to get a look inside government. And when you have a pattern under both Republican and Democratic administrations, of IGs being acting and thus, by definition, comparatively impotent to somebody who has the confidence of a Senate confirmation, that has to be reformed and I'm committed to do it. Uh, Congressman Quigley and I both need to get the Data Act passed. And I come to you today a little embarrassed that, well, we've been trying to get funding, we've been trying to cut dollars, we've been trying to cut this, we haven't gotten that done. We believe that we have an offset in order to pay for the Data Act. We're running the traps right now. If we have that, the intention would be to get it to the floor as a paid for modernization. We continue to work with the Senate. Uh, but most importantly, we need your continued help. 
we are not a committee that has all the answers. When you have frustrations, when you need uh, access to something you are not getting, you have to tell us and you have to help us figure out how through legislation or, quite frankly, through joint letters uh, that the caucus or the committee write, we can help make that happen. I have no illusions that uh, the Data Act alone will fix it or that having 100 percent staffing of IGs will fix it. At the end of the day, government transparency must be managed, meaning people must be dedicated both in and out of government to that transparency. It's the reason that the Congressman uh, Quigley and I formed the caucus. It's the reason we're dedicated to have a sustained organization within the House of Representatives that works with the transparency community, knowing that no matter how many laws we pass, only the oversight and the perseverance on a bipartisan basis will ensure that transparency occurs. So I want to thank you all for being here. We pledge to continue having these meetings, especially when we have the cooperation of other committees that loaned us this room. And I want to thank the Judiciary for loaning us this room. Uh, if you have questions, I think we have a few minutes before they pull us away. No, no uh, you know, I think that there would probably be, have to be a nuanced language to it because of the nature of some contact, you know, contract text, but uh, we'll look at that. That's a good suggestion. I wonder if you could elaborate on uh, how you're trying to structure the Data Act so that you can advance it. Well, our real problem with the Data Act is that even though, you know, scoring around here is, is, is a game of, of numbers that don't necessarily deal with reality. I think everyone knows that if we harmonize d data reporting and create that opportunity for interoperable transparency, that the, the business of, of driving the, the sites to be interoperable to, uh, to, in fact, having the spending sites go from many to one, it's all a cost savings. But underscoring, they only give us a very small score for what we're shutting down and a big score for what we want to do. So we, we knew we had to find as much as $100 million to, quote, pay for it. We believe we found that. I don't have any questions. I don't think anyone has any questions that if the conversion is done in a timely fashion, this will save money very quickly. But CBO wouldn't score it that way. And that's one of the responsibilities we have in the House is to have a pay for. And it's, uh, you know, I'd like to waive pay for, but you start waiving it on something like this, somebody else will want to waive it on a pet project that may, in fact, never save a penny. So uh, we do think we have it. We're not going to tell you what it is until, until we know we have it. Uh, but it, uh, it, is, it is what has held up the bill so far. Yes, sir. So last March during Sunshine Week, there was a series of hearings in the House and Senate on open government. One of the major themes was the problem of compliance. It's one thing to have great principles about open government. It's another thing to actually get agencies to enforce those principles. I'm wondering what has happened since last March to encourage enforcement of these great open government principles that are, are often not executed, maybe even sensitive information is on. Well, a lot of visibility on the problem, not much uh, real solution. Uh, it was a partisan hearing in which we brought in uh, the FOIA people to explain that the Department of Homeland Security had willfully turned over FOIA discovery to political appointees and they were allowed to delay, intervene, or even leak uh, FOIA. That would be an example where the ultimate in compliance that everyone has understood for a long time, that you get a FOIA request, you turn it over to career professionals, they do their work, ultimately it, it goes to the requester, uh, is, is taking a step backwards. We don't have an assurance that that's quit. And it may be one of those things that in the waning days before the presidential election, we asked the president to codify something that would prevent it from happening in the future. We haven't offered legislation yet. We do intend to have another round of hearings on FOIA compliance. Because if it's allowed to continue or to reoccur the way it did under one cabinet position in this administration, I have no doubt that future administrations of both parties will follow suit. And, and that's, even though, like I say, it was a fairly contentious hearing, I think we all have to understand 
this is the kind of thing you stop now or the other party will say, well, the other guy did it and pretty soon FOIA is more of a political football than, than freedom of information. I think there's a taste for this. Every, every movement has to have victories. I think the, the movement toward greater transparency needs some of these bills to pass. I, I think congressionally mandated reports, there's some critical analysis out there. Uh, uh, Mr. Tierney did an excellent report on funding the insurgency. There was a follow-up committee meeting re recently about that, dealing with Afghanistan. Once the public gets a taste for this sort of thing and it's available, I think that that will keep this process moving and force agencies, whomever is in charge, to move forward and to make things accessible and not play games. One more question, we better go both. Yes, ma'am. You discussed the role of whistleblowers as providing that information to IGs. Is your entity familiar with they have very few protections to bring forward at the moment? Say that a little louder, please. Whistleblowers, given the lack of rights that federal employees have at the moment. I know that the Senate introduced the Whistleblower Protection Enhancement Act earlier this Congress, and I'm wondering what the prospects are of your committee moving forward if you can. I'm going to be completely transparent here. We have had, under both Republican and Democratic uh, leadership, we have had a problem getting a whistleblower act that included the classified community. It doesn't matter who's the chair, so somehow the select intelligence committees in the House have not been able to find the same solution that what we call SISI, the Senate Intelligence Committee found. Our intention is to move something that is either identical or compatible with the SISI solution. And it is my intention to move that with or without the support of, of the Select Intelligence Committee in the House. So that's, that's a tough one for us because I've given them time, we've worked with them, we've done everything we can, but we will move it and we will move it. My intention is to move it before the end of the year and if it isn't moved for any reason to have an in my own party public display of it has to, we have to have whistleblower and whistleblower cannot somehow exempt the stuff that is least transparent. So getting that right is important. Uh, it's something that I was deeply disappointed. We almost but didn't quite get through in the last Congress. We will get it through in this Congress. So thank you very much.